Chapter 4, Section 2. Why is the Lockean Proviso important? Robert Nozick, in his work Anarchy, State, and Utopia, presented a case for private property rights that was based on what he termed the Lockean Proviso. Namely, that common or unowned land and resources could be appropriated by individuals as long as the position is a uh, position of others is not worsened by uh, doing so. However, if we do take this proviso seriously, private property rights cannot be defined. Thus, Nozick's arguments in favor of property rights fail. Some libertarians, particularly those associated with the Austrian school of economics, argue that we, we must reject the Lockean proviso, probably due to the fact that it can be used to undermine the, the case for absolute property rights, but their argument goes as follows. If an individual appropriates and uses a previously unused resource, it is because it has value to them, as an individual, to engage in such action. The individual has stolen nothing because it was previously unowned, and we cannot know if other people are better or worse off. All we know is that, for whatever reason, they did not appropriate the resource. Quote, if latecomers are worse off, well, then, that's, uh, then, uh, then that is their proper assumption of risk in this free and uncertain world. There is no longer a vast frontier in the United States, and there is no point crying over the fact. Again, Rothbard, Ethics of Liberty, page 240. Hence, the appropriation of resources is an essentially individualistic asocial act. The requirements of others are either irrelevant or unknown. However, such an argument fails to take into account why the Lockean Proviso has such an appeal. When we do see that, uh, when we do see that rejecting it leads to massive injustice, even slavery. However, let's start with a defense of rejecting the Proviso from a leading Austrian economist. Consider the case of the unheld soul water hole in the desert, which everyone in a group of travelers knows about, which one of the travelers, by racing ahead of the others, succeeds in appropriating. This clearly and unjustly violates the locking proviso for its use, however this view is by no means the only one possible. We notice that the energetic traveler who appropriated all the water was not doing anything which, always ignoring, of course, prohibitions resting on the locking proviso itself, the other travelers were not equally free to do the other travelers too could have raced ahead they just did not bother to race for the water it does not seem obvious that these other travelers can claim that they were hurt by an action which they themselves could have easily taken this is israel kersner entrepreneurship entitlement and economic justice page 385 to 413 in summary in reading nozick and four oh and reading nozick in page 406 Murray Rothbard, we should note, takes a similar position in a similar example, arguing that the owner of the soul oasis is scarcely being, coer uh, scarcely being coercive. In fact, he's supplying a vital service and should have the right to refuse a sale or charge whatever the customers will pay. The situation may be unfortunate for the customers, as, uh, as are many situations in life. Again, the Ethics of Liberty, page 221. Um, Rothbard, we should note, is relying to the uh, right libertarian of uh, is re replying to the right libertarian von Hayek. To his credit, does maintain that this is a coercive situation. But as others, including other right libertarians, point out, he has had to change his definition of coercion and freedom to do so. See Newman's Liberalism at Wit's End, pages one thirty to one thirty four, for an excellent summary of the debate. Um, now, we could be tempted just to rant about the evils of the right libertarian mind frame, and we'll try to present a, claim, uh, a calm analysis of this position instead. What Kersner and Rothbard et al. fails to note is that without the water, the other travelers will die in a matter of days. The monopolist has the power of life and death over their fellow travelers. Perhaps he hates one of them, and so raced ahead to ensure their death. Perhaps... He just recognized the vast power that his appropriation would give him and so correctly sees that the other travelers would give up all their possessions and property to him in return for enough water to survive. Either way, it's clear that perhaps the other travelers did not race ahead because they were ethical people. They would not desire to inflict such tyranny on others because they would not like it inflicted upon them. Thus, we can answer Kersner's question. What is so obviously acceptable uh, about the Lockean proviso? It is the means by which human actions are held accountable to social standards and ethics. It's the means by which the greediest, most evil and debased humans are stopped from dragging the rest of humanity down to their level via a race to the bottom. 
and inflicting untold tyranny and domination on their fellow humans. Any, uh, an ideology that could consider the oppression which uh, consider the oppression which could result from an appropriation as supplying a vital service, and any act to remove this tyranny as coercion is obviously a sick ideology. We may note that the right libertarian position on this example is a good illustration of the dangers of deductive logic from assumptions. You can see chapter 1, section 3 for more on this methodology. After, uh, after all, W. Duncan Rieke in his uh, introduction to Austrian e economics states that to be intellectually consistent, one must concede his absolute right, uh, absolute right to the oasis. Mm. Markets, Entrepreneurs, and Liberty, page 181. To place ideology before people is to ensure humanity is placed on a Procrustean bed. Which brings us to another point. Often right libertarians say that anarchists and other socialists are lazy or do not want to work. You could interpret Kersner's example as saying that the other travelers are lazy for not rushing ahead and appropriating the oasis, but this is false. For under capitalism, you can only get rich by exploiting the labor of others via wage slavery or, within a company, get better pay by taking positions of responsibility, i.e. management positions. If you have an ethical objection to treating others as objects, means to an end, then these options are unavailable to you. Thus, anarchists and other socialists are not lazy because they're not rich. They just have no desire to get rich off the labor and liberty of others as expressed in their opposition to private property and the relations of domination it creates. In other words, anarchism is not the politics of envy. It's the politics of liberty and the desire to treat others as ends in themselves. Rothbard is aware of what is involved in accepting the Lockean proviso, namely the existence of private property. Quote, Locke's proviso may lead to the outlawry of all private property of land, since one can always say that the reduction of available land leaves everyone else worse off. Again, The Ethics of Liberty, page 240. Which is why he and other right libertarians reject it. It's simple. Either you reject the proviso and embrace capitalist property rights, and so allow one class of people to be dispossessed and another empowered at their expense, or you reject private property in favor of possession and liberty. Anarchists obviously favor the latter option. As an aside, you should point out that following Stirner, the would-be monopolist, is, not, uh, is doing nothing wrong as such in attempting to monopolize the o oasis. He is, after all, following his self-interest. However, what is objectionable is the right libertarian attempt to turn this, uh, this act into a right, which must be respected by the other travelers. Simply put, if the other travelers gang up and de uh, depose of this would-be uh, tyrant, then they have the right to do so. To argue that this is a violation of the monopolist's rights is insane and an indication of a slave mentality or a following Rousseau that the others are simple. Of course, if the would-be monopolist has the necessary force to withstand the other travelers, then his property, um, then the matter is closed. Might makes right. But to worship rights, even when they obviously result in despotism, is definitely a case of spooks in the head, as Sterner would have said. And man is created for the Sabbath, not the Sabbath is created for 